Hey everybody, I'm Lance, welcome to my channel, and happy Pride Month. June is Pride Month, and I just got back from Mexico on a nice vacation, but I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. Haven't had a whole lot of time to paint, but I'm really excited to be doing this collaboration of 20 really talented fluid artists spread across three days. I'll put the links to all their videos in the description box, so please check that out. And I'm gonna be doing a fluid art seascape, and I have done those before, but I'm gonna do it in a little bit of a different way, and I'll show you that in just a minute. And I'm gonna be using some Rainbow Pride colors in the sky. So let's go ahead and let's pour some paint. Okay, let's get right to it. I am dividing my horizon line, like my sky and my sea, equally with a ruler and a pencil. And I'm also doing something that I like to do, which is I like to divide it to where the sky has more space of the composition and maybe the sea or the little bit of sand does not. Or if it was a landscape, the, the landscape might be more the focal point and the sky is not you know, as much of the focal point. I don't like it when someone cuts the canvas directly in half completely on a landscape because I feel like that looks unnatural and it kind of makes your eye feel like, well, what is the focus here? Um, but that's just my personal preference. So that's kind of what you see me doing. But now also what you see me doing is I'm putting tape down along that line. I'm putting my frog tape down along that line and that it's, so it gives me nice level horizon lines. And I'm actually going to put another piece of tape on the back of that tape um, just so that it's not so sticky and, you know, I might catch it and then throw paint everywhere or something. So anyway, you have to be careful when you try to do this, but I'm going to back that tape with another piece of tape. And it doesn't really matter that that backing piece of tape isn't exactly dead on at the bottom along the line of the horizon, as long as the first piece is down and you know solidly against your horizon line um, just because you'll see what happens later on it's really pretty forgiving as long as that first piece of tape is really straight across and really sealed well then um, everything is good so I'm now making a cup for the sky and like I said earlier in my intro I'm doing you know the rainbow colors of pride uh, in the sunset sky so that's what I'm trying to do here. And I'll talk a little bit more about my colors. In, the, in honor of inclusivity, I'm using some Vivid Intense colors from Color Art, and I also use a TLP in here. I think I use Lagoon for the water because it's a beautiful kind of turquoise color. Um, but anyway, yeah, I, I, I used everything from Arteza to Color Art to TLP to Liquitex to Amsterdam, uh, a lot of custom colors going on in this piece. And I like using a variety of different paints uh, for these type of fluid art landscapes or seascapes. I feel like you get some interesting results. I will say my paints were a little bit thinner than what I'm used to. And I know some people's school of thinking is to be a lot thinner for these types of paintings. I personally don't like to do especially my sky too thin and so um, it turned out really pretty cool in the end but I just wanted to say that you know everybody has their own way of doing things but I like to keep my paints not super thick but a little bit thicker for these types of fluid art landscapes or seascapes especially when doing the skies but anyways um, I'm gonna continue on loading up my cups I'm loading a cup for more kind of lighter colors to to the white, to the really light blue along the horizon. For the bottom cup and the top cup, I'm gonna do flip cups. And that top cup is gonna be more of my darker colors with the blues and the purples um, so that it creates a little bit more depth of field. Now what I'm showing you is that I'm layering a really small cup with the yellow and the orangey kind of peach color of the sunset 
and that's going to be kind of my fail-safe flip cup that will go down along the horizon if I don't have enough of that kind of lighter color at the horizon line so that it draws you down and gives you that more depth of field kind of feeling to the sky. So that's why I layer a third little small cup. Because um, as you can see there, there's some rainbow colors there. Um, I think. <laughs> I mean, rainbow? I, I think there is. Um, they're more muted because I have purposely muted the colors a little bit so it wasn't too technicolor. Um, but I kind of like it. I'm also showing you there that I put a little uh, Ziploc bag around my lighter so that I don't get paint all over it because I get pretty messy with this type of pour because you're tilting off at such severe angles and there's quite a bit of paint that has to get tilted off in order to make your skies and your horizon, your sea, your sand, all of it. So anyway, it's a lot of tilting back and forth on uh, very steep angles. And so there is my cup and that's my cup that's going to help me give that lighter look to the horizon. Um, and so that's kind of what you see me doing now. I'm just tilting back and forth and trying to get more cloud shapes. I wasn't extremely happy. Like I said, I wanted my paints to be a little thicker so that I would have got a little bit more of a different kind of look in the sky, but I like the sky. I don't often do a sunset sky. So um, it was kind of a new experience for me too. So you're kind of learning right along with me. <laughs> and um, the great thing about this though is you can always do something more, whether it be swiping, whether it be putting another cup of paint down and then tilting that off and seeing how that goes. You can also put more color, like I'm gonna show you in a minute, that I put a layer more cup with like blue, the blues and the purples, and put that back into the sky as well. And um, so you really don't have to panic per se. Um, it's kind of forgiving in that way. And as you can see there, I'm using my uh, Tracy Reed swiping tools that I love so much. Um, if you haven't seen her swiping tools, you should go to her Etsy shop and check that out. Um, I really love them. I use them so much and so many different things. Um, but yeah, so now I'm just going to keep tilting back and forth and trying to put some more of that lighter color back into the horizon. And like I said, I'll be putting the blues in there in just a little bit. But I wanted to show you this part of it somewhat in real time because it's kind of a lengthy process to get what you want sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. And um, like I said, it's kind of forgiving, so you don't have to panic if things are not working out perfectly for you in the beginning. Um, there's usually something that you can do to get a better outcome. And I'm using my skewer a little bit here and there through the clouds. And um, sometimes too, you just have to kind of move on. I mean, I, I really love Chris Snyder and Julie Vatcher. They're probably two of the most premier <laughs> fluid artists that do fluid art landscapes or seascapes and um, they're really brilliant at it and so I really kind of take lessons from them as far as what they do and you know I've really gained a lot of knowledge from watching them um, two very very nice uh, wonderful artists and people and uh, so you should check them out as well they do incredible work um, with fluid art seascapes or landscapes but um, now, as you can see, I'm moving on to my seascape because you kind of have to move on sometimes because this is going to get tilted back and forth. So that sky is going to change shape a little bit. It gets a little bit more settled because it dries. And, and so it doesn't move quite as much. So now I'm in that quadrant. And as you can see, it created a nice channel for my water. And I didn't like what I initially got with my water, so I loaded my cup up with the deeper colors of that lagoon and my darkest color, it's like an ultramarine mixed with some turquoise. And that is giving me more of the kind of C shape that recedes back into the distance that I wanted. So I did another cup that way as well. And so now I'm liking more what I'm getting. And you just keep tilting back and forth until you feel like you've gotten 
kind of what you want. And I like the fact that this lower portion is giving me the hint of possible waves crashing so that I'll be able to work with that in just a minute. So now you can see me loading up my sand. And so my cups for the sand are my two colors. I have kind of like a rose gold and a champagne. And I mix a little bit of my white in there so it gives you the idea of the surf. And I'm just gonna be tilting back and forth with that as well. And I will show you in just a second kind of what it's like when you start to pull this paint, the paint tape up because it gives you a really interesting distinct line and and actually it gives you a pretty interesting barrier between the two um, quadrants of paint the surf and the sand especially you'll see and then you can kind of fill in what you need to with a palette knife or whatever uh, with the sand color and then you can kind of I'll use like a straw and blow it out as you see here I'm blowing out some of my white to create this kind of surf wave crashing look and I'll do this a little bit too after I pulled my tape up because I have such a strong hard line there I want to create kind of the surf kind of cascading over the sand a little bit and blow that out and give you the idea of the waves and the surf coming in across the sand um, and then I just use my palette knife to create you know some of the like surf in the in the background you see a little bit of those white caps of the waves and uh, you know I really do enjoy doing these I think they're always going to turn out different <laughs> no two are ever really exactly alike for sure um, and they're just really fun I think this one has almost kind of like a Vincent Van Gogh like kind of a Van Gogh-ish quality to it it's a bit freer I'm not trying to make it very realistic and I kind of like that quality it's more of an impressionistic seascape painting If you've enjoyed this video, found it interesting or informative, please hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and ring the bell so you'll be alerted when I upload new content. Please go ahead and subscribe, people. I've been out for a while. <laughs> I've got some ground to make up, and I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and we can pour together. I haven't... I haven't spoken a lot about my colors, but I will try to leave those in the description box as best I can. Uh, like I said, there were a lot of custom colors and a lot of various different companies and types of paint used. And so I'll try to put those in there. And I'm just showing you the beautiful kind of flyover. You can see the beautiful metallics glittering in the light from the camera. And just really really pretty pretty reflective glittery qualities to those paints and I hope that you've enjoyed this uh, painting like I said I don't know I may go in and do some um, additional painting to this I'm not sure sometimes I just like how it ends up but uh, maybe you could let me know what you think in the description box well in my comments and I hope that you've enjoyed this fluid art seascape with rainbow pride colors i've enjoyed this pride collaboration and be sure and check us out tomorrow fiona fiona art will start everything off and she will start everything off at 4 p.m eastern standard time and until we meet again i can't wait to see you soon for some more fun pouring together <laughs>